welcome to The Near Memo, a weekly conversation about search, social, and commerce. What happened, why it matters, and the implications for local. Hello and welcome to episode 82 of The Near Memo with David, Mike, and me, where we talk about search, social, and commerce through a local lens. And um, as always, lots of news, but we'll be focusing in mostly on search and Google this week. Uh, always perennial topics. And we're going to be talking about Google's outreach to small businesses to get them to lobby against antitrust reform. We're also going to be talking about Apple search and whether or not that's interesting, viable, has a future, what's going on there. And um, I will be talking about threats to Google. Are these new search paradigms, search alternatives really meaningful? Uh, do they represent any concrete threat long term? to Google's search dominance. So Mike, why don't we start with you and the outreach that Google did to small business owners this week? Right, so this is sort of an embarrassing story because I, who <laughs> think of myself as the ultimate skeptic, was deceived by an email I received from Google. It came from Google Customer Solutions and I thought, oh, what is this? Maybe it's about my Google My Business listings. I have no idea, maybe it's about ads, I'm not sure. But then the subject was, Tell us what policy issues matter to you and your business. And I thought, oh, is Google really want to know that I want universal health care so that small businesses can compete or that taxation isn't equitable between big corporations and little ones? Oh, cool. Let me go. And I immediately went and I hit the big call to action in the middle of the email, which I didn't read the two paragraphs. I get out to their, their survey and the survey is, you know, which interest, which, which issues are you most interested in learning about? And it's all the issues that Google has with current tech regulations, privacy, uh, antitrust. And then they want to know which of these activities I am willing to do in terms of lobbying. It had nothing to do with the email that they sent me for the calls to action. I then went back and read the email and realized, oh, this is just more of Google's small business targeting to help them, you know, astroturf their complaints against the government. Uh, it, it was just so, I mean, I fell for it. And that is on one hand embarrassing, but on the other hand, it's telling. Google knew what they're doing. This is not, this was not an accident that this was from customer solutions. It wasn't from their political arm. It wasn't an accident that the subject was deceptive. It wasn't an accident the call to action was deceptive. This was intentional. And it's embarrassing to me on um, two levels. One, I'm embarrassed for Google for some reason. And two, I'm embarrassed that I fell for it. Well, I mean, what's, 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 what's interesting- Google clearly has no shame, Mike. So I don't think you have to be embarrassed on their <laughs> behalf, but- Well, so, so what, Google did, what Google did is very um, kind of sophisticated here in terms of manipulation, psychological manipulation. So they, so they give you this sort of neutral- outreach that makes you think this is something to have having to do with your business. You So they probably got some very high open rate. And then they ask you this kind of neutral question, what are you interested in learning about? And then they say, if you felt your business interests were at risk, what would you be motivated to do? And then they list these options, signing a petition, and attending a, an in-person advocacy event, sharing your views on social media, emailing lawmakers, calling lawmakers. And then they ask, have you participated in issue advocacy before uh, signing position, petitions and contacting lawmakers? So what they're doing is they're sort of identifying segments and their willingness to do certain kinds of things. And then they're going to contact these people again. They'll get, they'll get some, you know, they have millions and millions of businesses on their, on their list. And so they'll get some positive responses and then they, they're going to do outreach to these people and try and marshal them in, in, as an anti antitrust lobbying tool. And then they'll be claiming BS stuff like small businesses oppose government, right. uh, you know, antitrust reform. And it's, it's, it's just really um, disappointing in a certain way. I mean, I guess they're, they're feeling like these are existential threats to their, to their revenue and profitability. And so they're going to do what they can. Within it's the fascinating, though, that they would take the approach that is, at the same time, so damaging to anybody who reads through these to their reputation. I mean, I my rep, my perception of Google has declined over the years. I like all the people that work there, but I consistently find them to be incredibly self interested. But this even knocked my opinion lower. It's like why why can't you, 
it wouldn't, given how many millions they can send, they would have just as many advocates if they were honest in the email. That's what I don't understand. Well, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I don't think I, th I I don't I don't think if they had said, "Hey, lobby Congress for us on antitrust reform," they'd have so many advocates. They could have said, "Here are issues that before the government that are important to us. What do you think? Give us your opinion about them." Right? They could have found out who thought they were. Yes, there would have been a more. There's a more neutral way for them to have presented this, but, but right. I, I think a more honest way, not neutral. Honest. This is dishonest. There's, you know, I mean, it's like okay, I, I can take neutral or I can take bias, but I I can't take dishonesty. That's what drives me crazy. Well, it's a it's it's a it's a psychological manipulation. You know, they're 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 yeah. they're sort of it's it's a kind of conversion it's it's interesting as a marketing exercise right it's a conversion <laughs> funnel it is a conversion <laughs> funnel and one presumes that they've tested it pretty broadly before they send it to everybody yeah so this is the one that well, got the most clicks so, so it's it's so you know sort of on the larger issue of of antitrust and antitrust reform i mean we're we're getting into sort of crunch time with all these things there's a privacy bill that may or may not get voted on um you know there's there's a, a couple of other pieces of legislation, but there's the American Competition and Innovation Act, if I said that correctly, um, which which is the one I think that includes the anti self preferencing stuff um, that they're that they're concerned about. And these these will all have to be passed or they will die probably if Congress changes hands. So there's really it's really the calendar year that they have to 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 do this. And all the tech companies are spending millions and millions of dollars, maybe with the exception of Microsoft at the top, to uh, to defeat them. And we'll, you know, it's kind of coming down to the wire. I think Microsoft is equally involved. They're just at the other end, pulling the strings, trying to, along well, with Yelp, yeah, trying, trying to trying to yeah. cut Google and Facebook off at the knees or Apple. Well, whoever. they're not they're not as aligned in 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 this case with uh, right. with what's going on with the right. with google and facebook they're not aligned but they are definitely active you can smell it in the <laughs> yeah I, I i'm sure they're they're not sitting completely on the there's your skepticism coming back mike that's good this was not there's only a temporary dip. <laughs> <laughs> temporary setback well i i on on uh, sort of a, on a final note um on this topic one of the pieces this week in the newsletter was about all these simultaneous legal actions happening against google i mean google Google has really never been in this position before where they've got uh, state attorney generals suing them for antitrust. You've got the D Department of Justice suing them for antitrust. Uh, you've got multiple private litigants. They just settled, settled a uh, case, I think, in New York about sort of a, a, unauthorized use of location data. Um, in Europe, they just, uh, they just lost an appeal of a 4 billion euro judgment um, they can't go any further with that. They're just going to have to pay that because it was in the highest court. And there's a $25 billion or euro suit right now uh, against them around digital advertising um, brought by different publishers in, in, in the EU and UK, you know, predominantly news publishers, I believe. So they're, they're facing all kinds of legal pressure. And, and the some, question I would these, ask about this for another show is, is this deterring Google from developing any innovative products and use cases. I mean, uh, in other words, are they so sort of wrapped up in this kind of defense? Are they not able to continue to build out innovative products or not? Well, I, I would, I would argue no, because I think the, the teams that are working on products are very separate from the legal teams. I think what, what hampers Google right now is this kind of, bunker mentality that they've gone into that a lot of uh, tech companies have gone into, which is, you know, we're not, we've, we've frozen hiring. We're going to focus on profitability. We're going to focus on squeezing more prof productivity out of our existing employees. And that's, that's an environment of risk adversity, right? They're not going to be so inclined, even though they've got still a lot of their, their, uh, I forget the, the area 120 or whatever. They just that, got cut in half though. Like yeah, that. right. So, so they're 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 not doing anything particularly risky now. Well, and Sundar even put out a memo to that exact effect, saying we yeah. need to double down on our primary foci and find ways to be more productive with those. Right, so. right. Circling the wagons, whatever metaphor around AI first. That was what they said. 
Yeah, so so there will be a lot of work to do on that front, Mike. There is a lot of work to do there. I agree. There, so all right, all right. Thanks for joining David, Mike, and Greg. To stay on top of the latest developments in local, subscribe to our newsletter at nearmedia.co. We'll see you next week.